in hopes that we win save first. Get them in here. Tell them we lit. We live. Young girl, the gang in the building. We about to twist heads, man. I tell you, man, I, I, I tried to get to y'all earlier this morning and do all these classes, but it seemed like they, it was just somebody out there, somebody needed things, needed, uh, needed me to do something. So we missed like the first class and the second class, but tomorrow though, we ain't gonna have to do nothing. We already told them. That's all day, that's all I'm doing. But we had to at least get this one off today. So we made it back in time just now uh, to get this class going. And this was going to be a good one. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a funny one. I mean, you know, hey, we 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 entertainers, baby. You know what I'm saying? And we we, we teachers. We do it all, you know. Uh, and you too. We got to keep this one clean. No cursing. So uh, they gonna flag, they flagging me anyway, but they gonna probably review it, and uh, we ain't gonna do no cursing, man, cause uh, that's how we get down there, man. No pro, we ain't using no profane. We gonna have a profane on the uh, Patreon. The profane gonna be on the Patreon. The profile. We got them. Get them in here and tell them. We take an end of the court. And we're going to bring up other cr galactical criminals who will be taking the court as well. Right? Get them in here. This is in versus the people of key. Galactical court. Case number 927. We indicting Enlil. Hey, we indicting Enlil, man, for crimes committed. And if Enlil get off, the Dragonians saying, well, why can't they get off? The Dragonians saying, why can't they get off if Enlil get off? So we're putting up, we going, Enlil's getting indicted first. And once they see Enlil get indicted, then all the rest of them, must, uh, it'll follow suit. We'll follow suit. This is a lawsuit against Enlil for crimes committed. You don't want to miss this one. Get them in the building and tell them we live. We lit, baby. All right, let's switch to that laptop. Man, this is going to be a good one, I tell you. Get him on in here. This is going to be another banger. As DJ Cali say. Another one. Another one, y'all. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Let's get them thumbnails pulled up. All right, so we've got a lot of newcomers, so we're going to just give a quick synopsis on what's going on here. Let me get that chat pulled up. We're going to give a quick synopsis of, one, of what's going on here for my newcomers. Hey, Rob, by in the building, we about to get cracking up in this joint, man. It's about to smell like butt crack up, up in this joint, man. Like I say, YouTube, we ain't doing no uh, cursing, man. We're going to keep it clean. Now, I want y'all to keep in mind when Enlil, when I do the Enlil voice, Enlil sounds just like Mike Epps. How Mike Epps be talking, like me and me and me he talk with his nose. Telepathically, though, you know what I'm saying? His voice is telepathically sounds just like uh, Mike Epps. But in in the in the uh, in they tones though, like it, it, it's it's hard to explain. But so you but you get what I'm saying. He he a funny. He kind of funny. He, like he he got a dry sense of humor. He ain't funny. Like he ain't trying to be funny. 
But uh, it's the way he talk and the way he th- say stuff. It, it, it's just funny. You know what I'm saying? When we uh, when we challenge uh, we we we, 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 we actually court is taking. It starts at seven o'clock. Hey, twelve fielder. Hey, court starts at twelve o'clock. I mean, I mean seven o'clock. So we're gonna be chiming in. Uh, hey, Rob, by twelve. Hey. We gonna be chiming in uh, to the court, man. It lives up for indictment, y'all. We gonna be chiming into the court, man. So uh, we gonna go over some laws that he broke because uh, we, we got a tape out called Galactical Laws. A lot of y'all probably ain't listened to those tapes, but we are gonna go over what's going on, Rob Bot, our twelve fielder. Hey, Rob Bot, Rob Bot. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. But, uh, we're gonna get we getting those uh those meetings back going so because uh we got we in the clear now so we got like a little breathing room and uh all right you know see four from the to come in uh yeah uh we we, we have it at seven o'clock we uh in Liz is uh being we up here up for the grand jury man for galactical crimes that he committed and uh the Dragonians are saying if in Liz don't go down for what he did then why how should they go down you know what I'm saying? So we got so we got to get in live first. Rob by uh, uh Jarvis Jefferson. Man, so not the uh okay, this is the thumbnail right here. In live versus the people of key. Right? This is our, our planetary symbol right here. Telepathically plant. This is what our name of our planet is right here. This is a symbol. This is the name of your planet, really. It's not. It's really like key and all that is this uh, third dimensional expressions. This right here is the, the fifth dimensional symbol that you display in your pineal gland when you communicate with these beings to, to tell them where you're from. Uh, and this is one of Enlil's symbols uh, for his, because he got his own, one of his own fleets uh, outside of what uh, Nubaru. Some of his uh, some of his fleets is on Nubaru. Um, but uh so we we going, we're taking him to court, man. So we being we're gonna be heard. We got the Andromeda standing there in present. Hey, we got the 11 elder Metatron, ladies and gentlemen, in the building. We standing, hey, we uh the Andromedans are in. And they listening in on this because they are some uh, some of the beings that's uh, one of our caretakers for this particular part of the galaxy as far as uh, seeing to it that we get ascended. And by right, it's rights. And like, okay, so as it is above, so is it below. So down here you got human rights, right? You got uh, constitutional rights. You got rights that people don't know about it, they don't use on earth and that's that's part of the reason you can take advantage of it. not no civil rights i'm talking about human rights indigenous rights we got these rights that we don't take advantage of and galactically we got these rights as a whole but it's got to be a certain amount of us to come together to to do this we got galactical rights and those galactical rights i intend to prove to you that in live now, being number one, violated galactical law by what he did. And we we filed for a cease and a desist on his people because he, he going to try to say that it ain't him doing it. It's, it's the people that, uh, well, he, he going to say that the people don't work for him, but these people work for him. It's a group that work for him. We'll get on Ty Nish and Hala now in a minute. We're going to bring them to court too. They're going to be brought to court for galactical crime. But we're putting up in live first because they said, how y'all going to charge us if y'all don't charge in live first? So in live, we bringing them, we, we indicting them for galactical crimes committed. And we're about to get ready to read off to you some of the galactical crimes that he committed. Some of the articles that he broke. Um... Give you a quick synopsis for I know all my elders already know and all my savings, my new Wapian brothers, those who've been following us, those who are students of the master teacher, they, they up to speed on most of this. So we're just gonna go get, get the newcomers a quick synopsis. 
are the Anunnaki are beings, are humanoid advanced beings. They are real beings. Matter of fact, why? Uh, let me let me play a tape with Baba saying that they're real beings. Let me play that tape for you. Well, I got that tape in here. Did I put it in here? I might have then put it in here. I already played it on one tape, uh, one previous tape. Thought I had put it. Oh, yo, you know what? It might be in this file. It might be in this file. Okay, hold up just a second. Just a sec. It's going to be in, in a little close. Glad to record. All right. Let's see if I got. Okay, here you go, right here. I'm going to play this clip where the Bible said that they're real. That in little them are real people. Let's see this clip, right? Come on. What the caught up with is time now. I knew it in man. The Bible, I saw him myself. All right, so on that clip right there, he tell you that these are real beings, real physical beings. Why? Now, they are high dimensional beings, and when they come into Earth atmosphere, other planets, they use avatars. We already broke that down. And, and that uh, the human avatar or the human looking avatar. It can be used on several different planets because your your planet Terra or uh, Key or uh, Tiamat at one point, it ain't the only planet that's terraformed. Ter uh, planet terraforming, we we perform this uh, terraforming. A lot of your a lot of your uh, a lot of people own companies now where they go and do landscaping. It's, it's all it is, is landscaping. Galactical landscaping is terraforming, so we can terraform any planet. We got technology to terraform any planet. So it's thousands, millions of planets, uh, some of them identical to Earth, even more, much larger than Earth, or uh, some of them identical to uh, Tiamat before, like when Earth, before it got broke off four or five times. So uh, terraforming is not just on your planet, it's on millions of other planets and in other galaxies, other star systems, right? And also in Lil, we bringing him up for crimes for Keith, but he's also doing the same type of thing that he's doing to us on several other planets, right? We just bringing him up for crimes against us here uh, on Key, right? So check this out. So uh, to give you a quick synopsis, Baba just told you that they were real beings. These beings live on a, on a 12th planet, which is Nubiru, which is on a 3,600 year orbit in the uh, Orion district, right? It was on a, it was on a 25,000 year and some change orbit, a little bit over some change, right? Orbit, Kala Am. And uh, that, that once Nubiru had to crash 24 billion years ago, they changed the, uh, they changed the trajectory. And keep in mind, it's more than one of these Nubiru, a whole fleet of these ships. Not just one ship, it's a whole fleet of them, identical to each other. Just like the US got they different aircraft carriers and they different fleets of different, so they got seven fleets of ships, uh, US, uh, for every continent. Um, so we also, Nubiru is a, is, a, is a whole bunch of fleets of ships, several ships in the inside and several big, uh, identical to uh, mothership Nubiru. One, one in particular that we're dealing with was special because it was driven by Tahuti, Murdoch, which is a grandson of Anu. Inki, or uh, Enlil, is the son of Anu. Anu goes back to ancient Sumerian culture. I'm just trying to give you a quick synopsis for everybody that don't know what, what's going on. I um hey I'm live y'all live okay so uh 
Anu is like the president. So you, if you've been following us, like you got a president down here, but the president don't mean they the CEO. Keep that in mind. The CEO is the all. The all is the CEO. The ultimate source of existence is the all. A new is just a being in the all that can be, uh, took place in a competition to be the wisest amongst everybody. So he became the most high. And it's more than one most high. Keep that in mind. It's more than one most high. This, this a new is the most high over the 19 galaxies. There's 19 galaxies right here in the cluster. Your Milky Way, uh, what they call it, the Milky Way, like somebody would say, oh, yeah, well, they, we, we didn't call it the name of a milk, uh, a candy bar. How about that candy bar was named after the galaxy? People just don't use more than one perspective, right? Okay. So uh, go back, get that journey to the Milky Way. We break that down, how we got here to the Milky Way. Uh, so Anu became the most wise amongst them, us, our family, the family. And so he became the most high to lead the family after his father, right? These people uh, use, like this, her avatar is from the Bantu people. That's why they call them the Antu people. See, they, they took avatars. This shit is deep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break it down, man. So they, but like before this, she looked different. They they look different de uh, depending on the time frames that we in billions, trillions, but mostly billions coming to Earth. It, uh, they look different, All right? I think I think this this avatar of her. It's maybe only like a couple billion years old, about around the time Enlil was born. Like probably like about 40 or 50 billion years old, this avatar. So, so how long have niggas been on the planet? Like it's another, that's another thing. But Enlil is the second son. Inky is the first son that was born. Enlil is the second son. If you want to get a quick synopsis of it in your head, if you ever read the Bible. And you read the story of Abraham. Abraham would be a new. Sarah would be a new uh, uh, Enlil's mother. Enlil would be Isaac, and Inky would be Ishmael, and his mother Idi would be Hagar. So you just change the people around in the story, and you'll get the storyline of Enlil and Inky. And the two brothers came here. Um, and the planet was already have species on it. Uh, when they first got here, the uh, planet was already having species on it. Uh, before they even took these type of avatars they got now. Uh, the, uh, the Homo erectus and uh, the Homo genus uh, was here evolving. And so uh, we get to the point why Enlil broke galactic law. Right? Now, we're gonna hear him out. What he gotta say? We we saw some of his discovery, or what he gonna present to, to in his defense, because galactic law states you have a right to face your accusers. So he uh, he has a right to face his accusers, right? We accuse him of a lot, and we're about to break it all down. He he breaks it all down in his book called the Bible. And what he all about? But the whole time we was thinking Enlil was supposed to be the good guy and we was blinded. He was the bad guy the whole time. He's a jealous God. He's the God that wants you to kill your son and say, oh, no, I'll change my mind. He's the God that create evil, but then tell you don't do it. <laughs> Snickers, he doing, he, he using us for amusement and that's against galactic law. Right? So these beings, go back, get the Adamant Project. We broke that down. What well, these beings stepped in and start the upgrade. We're going to get into that part when I started reading the Galactic Globe. We just break it down who Enlil is. And we got a snapshot of him in a newspaper when he came down, I want to say 18, I mean, 1983 or 86, I think it was. 
year after I was born, where he appeared to these people and we caught him because we got the eyebrows. That's him. We got him. Now it was an actor playing him in the video, but in the newspaper they took a re- they took a real picture of him, and it's a picture that we blew up of him right here at the bottom. Same damn look at that look at that uh, that line right there. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the beard. Look at the unibrow. Look at the unibrow. Now how did they, they didn't know they didn't know that he had a unibrow? How did they? Why would they take a picture and then put a unibrow on? Him? You know what I'm saying? And they, but they and they weren't even calling them in live. They was calling them Matreya. They they form of Jesus because he had superpowers. They said he was healing people. Because anarchies can do that. Their brain capacity is faster than yours, like Lucy. Lucy brain was uh, working like this. Right? Somebody get to it. I am Haru, your galactical guy. I'm here to represent y'all on behalf of Key. We're going to file tra- charges against. We're going to file charges against Inlil, man. You know what I'm saying? This is our planetary symbol representing us. This is in little, like I say, go back about 40 billion years. This dude is real. Look at his face. And in the, I'm gonna tell you, man, he's the type of dude that'll get him a piece and just wipe his. You know, his era era off and then come out like, yeah, man, you know, we we'll just got to take care of that, you know. So he smell like soap in one spot and then bud crack all of, you know what I'm saying? And and incense and shit. And I'm telling you, man, I I, I smelt him. I smelt him. I, I was in there with him. I saw what happened when he got mad when well Inky, well, because Inky uh Inky saved you know, the fish to him. Look at him. He, he be smoking cigars like Suge Knight. This is one of his symbols right here. I'm telling you, man. Everything you doing, you ain't doing nothing new. They did it already. I don't give a dang what you think you're doing. They didn't did. It. I'm telling you. I got them on. I got I got footage. I got uh like pictures of them doing it. You know what I'm saying? All right. Let's get into it. Galactical law is a series of rules and regulations handed down from ancient times since before ancient current space faring civilizations. It is a mandate followed by the civilized, all civilized societies and deal primarily with the interaction between different races. Any civilization that refuse to follow the rules of galactical law or consider galactical laws are considered Abhorrent, I'm trying to say, invaders, abhorrent invaders, and sanctioned or abhorrent, abhorrent invaders mm. and sanctioned or placed on their social ranging from population limits to ban on space and travel. Okay, so what well, what it is is these. So at one point. We came together, galactic. It's several different federations. You got the inner, inner, uh, inner planetary confederation. You got the galactic federation of light. You got the republic, galactic republic. You got it's like so it's it's thousands of different uh, organizations like this, right? Now all those a lot of those come together to form one organization called the Galactic Family uh, Federation of Family of Life. Right, and these beings at one point these beings came together and all agreed on a set of rules that everybody would follow, so nobody get taken advantage of in the galaxy, and so these rules were put into play. They go back about, um, I say, a long time, like maybe, maybe in this galaxy, maybe about around 40 some billion years ago, but around when Inlil was born, right? Okay, because it's, it's old people up in this galaxy. All right, the first law, article one, the first law is that the, 
the most well-known and most important law in the constitution of the galactical law. It states that no space-faring civilization can or should interfere in the development of pre-space uh, pre flight civilization without adequate cause. The punishment for breaking these laws is possibly death or exile known to a no zone or dark nebula. Those are, are de drop zones, dead zones, where ain't no, well, the life, well, a, a, a certain type of life, really no, really no life really live there, but it is a, a, a look like probably 30% life there. And these beings are very aggressive. Like, no, you get, if you get caught up in this zone, it's like a free zone. The dog, it's like, it's like, it's like the police picking you up as a Nubian back in the day in California and dropping you off in the SA hood. You know what I'm saying? In the SA hood, hoping they beat you up. That's the type of shit. Like, that's what they mean when they say exile you to the non zone or dark nebula. That means they're going to take you to a, like, you from a, you a, like, you a, uh, um, a, a, a Cerber kid, and they take you to the to the hardest projects in the, in the city, old block, and drop you off. You know what I'm saying? With the wrong colors on and everything. That's type of stuff when they talk about the non zone. So Enlil did interfere with the development of our planet. Now, in defense, his defense is that if, uh, if he he like Nino Brown in the court. It live like Nino Brown. If I go down, I'm taking everybody down. I ain't, I ain't going down. See, see, this is bigger than this is bigger than it live. This is bigger than it live. <laughs> this is bigger than it live. That's what he said. Right? This is bigger than me. I'm taking everybody down with me. Right? This is bigger than me. Because the Anarchies, they begged and complained to me about the work in the mines. That's what he that's what he said. They beg to complain about the work in the mines. Now, uh, granted, how did, how did the Anarchies get here to start working in the mines? They made a deal. The deal was made between uh, the Dragonians who are over this planet. So the people that's fun, the people that's original people of this planet are Dragonians. Dragonians before Enlil and them came. Right? Keep that in mind. Dragonians. Now, granted, Enlil and them was in this solar system uh, on Saturn, but they couldn't they couldn't come into Earth atmosphere at the time. They had to create certain types of uh, robots to do it. Right? And then once they were, to, they were able to set up a certain types of atmosphere, then they, they was able to come in and start doing the work. But the, the Anarchies, the nobles who were doing the break, breaking work, they complained to Enlil, who was put in charge. So he's saying that he ain't going down by himself. All those Anarchies that complained going down with him. <laughs> right? This, this is bigger than Enlil. That's what he said. Like, uh, you remember how Nino Brown was in court and they was taking Nino Brown down. He said, this is bigger than Nino Brown. You know what I'm saying? And then he pointed out a nigga in the crowd. A light skin the cat in the crowd and said that hey man, that's the guy, that's the real guy right there. Right? And he's like, sit down, order in the court, order in the court. So that's how it is. Hey, yo, yo, hey, uh, we my wife and I, we just went to see that play, you know, uh -huh. New Jack City play. We went to yeah. see that. It's, it's New Jack City play out. But, oh, yeah, that's fire. Uh, Trent, yeah, Trent, it's good, it's good though. But go ahead. I cut you off. That's fire, that's fire, man. Lines right up, yeah. lines right up, right. Hey, you went, if Nino Brown in court, that's just like about Enlil. <laughs> I ain't going down. Everybody, I'm, I'm telling you, they, they wanted me to do this. So by him, what they did is they broke galactical law. They broke this first article by stepping in and evoluting the species. Hold on, we're going to come back to that clause. That clause. Enlil, in order to get my people, in order to advance this species of beings, who were homo erectus, he stepped in and broke galactical law without telling Anu. Keep in mind, because people saying Anu was in on it. Now, Anu didn't even know about this. Go read the Holy Tablets. Read the Sumerian Tablets. Uh, you'll see that Enlil didn't know what they was doing because he was trying to make himself, he wanted just to please these uh, Anarchies. 
and just uh, make it like he, because Enlil is irresponsible. He an irresponsible God. He an irresponsible son. He always trying to make himself look good and how he got a lot of pride. So he, he ended up make, making mistakes. Right. And he was in competition with his brother, Inky. So uh, when they complained about working in the mines, he stepped in and evoluted with the, with the help of other beings who were going to bring his witnesses, Inky and Mother Ninty, and about three more other scientists that were involved and stepping in. So he said, if I'm going down, Mother Ninty's going down with me. And Inky, too, he was involved. Why ain't he in court? Why ain't Inky in court? I keep on hearing people say, why he keep on telling us about Enlil? Why he won't tell us about Inky? Oh, yeah. Uh, We're going to talk about Inky next. On the next, because uh, Inky, we bringing him as he one of our witnesses. Inky turned state to get his time off against Enlil. Inky turned state against Enlil, turned galactic against Enlil to get his time cut. So, and then he got, and then, and then our star witness, Ooten the Fish Tomb, our star witness, Ooten the Fish Tomb, who we've been protecting against Enlil and his gang. Enlil put a hit on Ooten the Fish Tomb now, and uh, so we had to put a protector, man. So what he did is he, uh, he interfered with the natural evolution of the planet by stepping in and upgrading the Homo Erectus to Homo Safety. And so that they can work in the mines and battle work of the Anarchies who needed the gold to take back the Riz. Why? Because Tanush, the Dragonians, had attacked our planet and caused a hole in the ozone layer. And the three suns, the red, the blue, and the uh, yellow sun, was shining through, which caused a, a, a disease which affected us because we was already in the process. We, were, we had developed technology to sin, and we was doing it about a couple of hours a day. Now keep in mind, one day on our planet was a thousand, one thousand ninety-five days. Your time, one thousand ninety-five days. Three years is one day to us. Uh, then one day is a thousand years. So it, it's really more than what you, uh, your time really. When you get into it, it could be one day, one year could be billions of years in our time in, our, in the fifth dimension because uh, one hour here becomes four hours on the fourth dimension. And then four, I mean, one hour here becomes four, five minutes in the fourth dimension. And then once you go to the fifth dimension, um, time becomes uh, nanoseconds uh, for year, for uh for days nanoseconds for days it depends on what uh what type of where you where you located it where you're planting it how many suns you got etc the distance of the planet from your sun right so time is only uh here on uh what we only in a certain time uh span here so what they did is this is against galactic law to do this without approval from the Galactical Council. So he did that, right? This is a homo, uh, what Baba got this in the Holy Tablets. We got the Holy Tablets in the link. You can read up on this uh, 113, right? This is a homo, uh, the genus homo, right? This is before the homo erectus, right? The homo erectus is right here. Now, the ho so the uh, these beings on this planet was already evolved naturally by themselves. And right now, you would just be coming into homo safety if it wasn't for Enlil stepping in. Enlil stepped in and advanced y'all so y'all can have enough brains to use the heavy equipment. And keep in mind, they show you chisel and hammer, but these people weren't uh, using chisel and hammer. They were using heavy, they was operating heavy equipment and driving big ass Tonka trucks and shit, hauling large amounts of dirt and gold or minerals. All right, these are the beings that they're talking about right here, the homo, uh, the homo sapiens, the oldest species on the planet, the sands man. You can see the eyebrow. They stepped in and uh, evolved these people. This is another picture. Uh, what else I wanted to say before I read the other clause? Uh, let's go back to that clause. 
A species may interfere with such a species only if it is to counter another advanced species. Uh, can you see is that a machinery? That, that name blocking it. And our interference crash landing on a pre uh, FL, FTL that's faster than the speed of light. So crash landing on a pre FTL civilization world is not punishable. The victim is, however, expected to abide by other laws and restrain refrain from any farther cultural poisons. <laughs> All right, so what that means like if uh, if you land on a planet civilized a civilization that's equal to yours, uh, you you. You got to follow their rules and regulations and whatever they say. And um, it depends on which, uh, what kind of bacteria and things they find on you because different beings come from other planets. They have different bacteria that you might, that they might not be, that might not kill them, but it'll kill you dead. You know what I'm saying? Like the uh, venerians. Right? So they say that you, uh, you got to be quarantined and follow the rules or whatever the people uh, say on that planet that you land on. Okay, hold on, let me go to the next one. Okay, Mother Ninty uh, is Enlil's sister, Inky's sister, Inky's wife, uh, also as well, Inky's wife. Look at the Willow's Peak. <laughs> now, Mother Ninty also turned state against Enlil to cover her own self, and we believe her her sincerity that she didn't know that a new didn't say uh that they could do it she said her, her her take is that the only thing i was doing is following the guy that was put in charge the guy that was put in charge was in Enlil. Enlil said his solution was to make a man to till the ground so i be me being the scientist the chief scientist she uh, i i i did what the dude that said that was in charge did and if you go if you go back and read the holy tablets, she was very sad. She went out and got she went and got her beer, right? She went and got her beer, and then you know, twist one, you know what I'm saying, and went outside and drunk her beer and stuff, and then came back. Uh, we're gonna keep it clean, YouTube. We're gonna keep it clean, man. No cursing, no nothing. She came back and she was crying about it, uh, about the uh. Uh, cause they, cause they had a, they had a secret meeting and Enlil was, this is what Enlil being broke up, broke up for galactical crimes. Now, when it was all, when the job was almost supposedly finna get shut down or get done, Enlil said that we got to destroy the evidence. The evidence is that the evidence is of, uh, and keep in mind, Inky was involved too. Inky, this is our two witnesses, our number two witnesses. Also, if we got three witnesses, Utna Fish Tune is one of the witnesses. They turn it straight on Enlil. All right, so keep in mind. So in order to not be how the, the evidence is this, is this, he wanted to keep to uh, lead these people here and destroy these people. These people are the evidence that he stepped in and did this. So what he did is got the Anarchies together and disguise the flood to wipe these people out. So that when it came down to this point, where we at now, that we wouldn't have Utna Fish Tune to testify against them. It's mafia shit, man. Take out the got witness. But his brother, who turned and stayed on him as well, Inky, saved a group of these beings. In your Bible, Look at the rainbow. In your Bible, they refer to this being as Noah. And he was saved by Inky. A news, I mean, uh, Enlil's half brother, a new son. Murdoch's father, the angel Murdoch Tahuti's father, the real Tahuti. Not the, uh, the, the fake one. Right? Check this out. We're going in, man. We're putting really crack heads into his cast, man. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button if you're in the building. All right. So 
Let's get rid of the evidence. Okay. All right. This is article two. Planets with developing civilizations are protected from seeding, colonization, and terraforming. These acts and these alterations of a planet ecosystem and evolution are a violation of the first law, meaning step because a higher dimensional beings cannot step in and interfere with lower dimensional beings evolution or whatever on a planet. That's against galactic law. And this one here law was written before and lived was even, uh, right, right around time when he was born. So, uh, and I'm talking about in the car that in the, in, in this time frame because all of us, we really have no birth date. We really all, we really all start from the beginning with the all. We all part of the all. So all of us are the same age, the same time when you want to really get down to it. But all of us beings here, but uh, we all have uh, personalities, individual personalities. Once we start to get down to the eighth dimension and seventh dimension, we have individual thoughts. Uh, and then those thoughts begin to slow down and turn into different light frequencies and create our light body. Then that light body slows down to create uh uh like a fifth dimensional body which is like a light body fifth slight physical body and then it slows down slow the net to create the fourth dimensional body which is the dream world body and then slow down that to, to what we are now in a third dimensional avatar right so by in letting them creating the heart weapon right then letting them had all these different weapons Hold on, let's get back to, let's read all of them, then we'll get into it. Article six, the production of goons, uh, avatars of the natives, meaning just like they did on the movie Avatar, that was against the logical law for them to do that without getting, getting uh, approval from the council to make avatars of the native planet and then use those avatars to over, overthrow a trick or rob or uh, deceive the, the natives that's against galactic law. It's prohibited goons. Goons are artificial creation, created beings from stone, clay, and other natural minerals, uh, preferring to the uh, Pacific planet, and opposed to simple robots, avatars, and cloning of the native species without the species consent is prohibited. So this, uh, so beings coming here to make avatars of humans and then use those avatars to come down here in human form, but they really are insect, or they really are gray, or they really are reptilian, or they really some other species that's against galactic law without us consent to it. Now, the people in charge, the people that's in charge, they could have consented to it. They could have consented to that. You know what I'm saying? We don't know because these uh it's a whole bunch of game going on in the background article seven black hole weapons extinction level chemical and biological weapons biological injections without natives consent check that out biological injections without the native consent so they got to get your consent to inject you and they don't break galactical law they don't break galactical law if you sign a contract saying experiment on me <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Pretty much. So without they uh so they know that by getting them to sign the waiver, they 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 covered on Article 7 right there. Black hole weapons, extinction level chemical and biological weapons, biological injections without native consent, mind control weapons, weaponized chemtrails, GMO alteration of the food, natives' food source, planet destroying weapons, sun destroying weapons. Web because they got weapons that can destroy people's sun. Uh, they showed you that in uh in the Transformers when they were coming to try to take our sun. Weapons used to alter the atmosphere, like the Hawk Project or weathers of the natives planet, WMDs of a caliber above nuclear weapons are banned. All these things are prohibited. So Inlil broke a lot of this shit because. He was dropping chemtrails. He still got his people doing it. And then he, he they, they altered the food. That's against galactic law. So the people that's doing that, breaking the, they breaking Article 7 hard right here. 
Now, I don't know if they got up to the black hole weapons, extinction level weapons. They, they, they got biological weapons. They got biological injections. But they about to come out with, uh, with another level of that shit uh, for the next election. We only can say so much, man. We keeping it clean, though, you two. So Enlia was using satellite weapons to destroy a whole, to, to poison people's crops. He was crop dusting niggas' shit. He was uh, using satellite weapons to just target people. And throw, he, he could use that weapon to freeze a whole area. So they, they, they it would be freezing there. They can change the whole weather there and the people die off. And that uh, murder, that's really murder. That's murder in the sense of galactical law. So he gets the murder. I'm trying to cover up the evidence. He was doing this. He used this tablet right here, which you got like right now. You got these tablets now, right? Where well, Inlil Ben had the tablet. And he was using it. He can control the satellite and the, the big eye. The big eye is a satellite, the Anunnaki satellite. They can zoom in 50 miles into Earth crust. They can zoom in to a half in the crack of behind and tell you if it's a it's great, if it's a little gray going on. That's how good that satellite is. And little blew up Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, on this, this is questionable because he could have used a weapon on uh, right at nuclear level, nuclear level uh, capability. See, it said as long as you don't go over a nuclear capability. So he he dropped the atomic bomb on Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, so it depends, but it's still against galactic law because he wiped that whole city out. Cats, rats, dogs, everybody. The cover part of the covering up the evidence. Of what he was all about. So this is the weather weapon. They got the new harp now, but they've been had it. This is a harp in ancient Kemet. Back when that uh Enlil, I mean Inky built it. And Inky Enlil made Inky use it on the people, but Inky spared on the fish tomb and brought on the fish tomb to, to testify against Enlil for galactical crimes, upgrading the species, then trying to destroy them. Article 8, all beings are expected to obey the laws of the planet they dwell on upon unless they are in violation of galactical law. So the laws of your planet, the constitution is the real law, supreme law of the land. You're supposed to follow that constitution. You're supposed to, Noble Drew Ali said that, follow the laws of the land. And, you know, lay low, be cool, be invisible until it's time, until it's time. Uh, so we, uh, when another, when other beings come here from other planets, they expected to follow the laws of your planet, unless those laws are in violation of human, uh, uh galactical being laws. Like down here, you got human laws or human rights, right? In international court, where the galact, where you got a bigger law in, in the heavens called the galactical rights, where, if the rights of your country or the area that you're going to violates the bigger supreme uh, law, the supreme law is galactical law, right? The supreme law in your land is the constitution, right? So if, if laws in your state violate the constitution, then those, you won't have to follow those laws. You won't have to follow laws that violate the constitution because those are not laws. See what I'm saying? So if a being comes to your planet and he's 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 respect and he's respectable, he's to follow the rules of your planet, which Enlil didn't do. Because if you go back and read the holy tablets, Baba tell you that these Dragonians they were skeptical about Enlil and them because they didn't they, they knew that they weren't going to agree with their peaceful ways. These Dragonians were agreeable, peaceful people, and they said that that these uh, that Enlil and them wasn't going to agree with their peaceful ways. So they was already skeptical of them not coming to and, and following their laws because of the cockiness that we had. We, we and our narcos were cocky, especially Enlil. Enlil was cocky. Oh, knew my dad. I could do whatever the hell I want. 
You know how the preacher's kid is the baddest damn damn kids, man. The preacher kids. They, my dad's a preacher. I, I can do, I, God is going to forgive me. I can do whatever I want, right? So the Drake, if you read that close, these Dragonians well, was already skeptical. Article 9, when in place of laws and in, interspecies business, only minors shade shifting is allowed. This is defined as shade shifting that can in no way be used for fraud, hiding, uh, uh, espionage, masking the uh, invisible, the uh, individual identity. Now, what that means is, okay, what they mean by that law, Article 8, eight I, some people, some beings are ugly, <laughs> they ugly than a mug, right? Like a, like a dragon, they might, like a dragon come down looking like what they looking like, or another species that's real ugly, they might be ugly to you, and you might be ugly to them. You know what I'm saying? Where you look, you might be ugly to them. But in order to communicate and so that you would be comfortable, they are allowed to shade shift to look uh, uh, presentable and what you look like so that you will feel comfortable with them. So that's why when certain, when certain grades were coming, they would project, when they talk to the humans, they would project a hologram, a human hologram. And they holograms are more advanced than uh, the holograms you, you, they use using now, like the, the Tupacs and all that. They, they hologram look actually more real, uh, like an actual real physical being. You can actually uh, touch these beings. You actually can touch these beings, uh, or these hologram beings. So what they would do, they use these holograms to communicate with humans so that they won't get uh, frightened. Hey, Rob Bot to the uh, Akatria, the first elder in the building, man. Um, yeah, so they would come in, they would come in and they, they would come in and hologram themselves or they would come in and use an avatar to make you more comfortable with them so that, so that you won't be like uh you know scared or you know like this like oh so like if like right now if a fucking big ass dragon came in your house even if it was a good one <coughs> and you get you see it it's kind of like spook you out because of tv and everything you know how they got a fear of these different beings so so article nine is in place for to, to, to allow some of these beings to be able to do a little bit of shade shifting to make you feel comfortable when they coming in, the ones that uh, got the pass, right? So that's Article Nine. So Enlil ain't he ain't broke that that he ain't broke no law on it with the shade shifting. Uh, the Article Ten: No civilization may war with another and or attempt to invade another unless the clear of war is made by the ruling government of that the other civilization. Now. Uh, beings that got more technology than you are not allowed to invade you uh, uh, unless you would agree to a fight and that'd be suicide really but somebody on the same level a planet that's on the same level of you as technology can challenge you to a battle now if the government don't agree with it the other people that want to attack don't have the right to attack you it's against the galactic law that's article 10 clause 1 Murder is prohibited. Murder being understood as any syndicate, avatar, or light body trap weapons, being killing another unlawfully, each civilization may deal with such individual on their own unless it is between two or more species. In that case of, of a elder is within rights to escort the suspect to the universal courts. If they do not comply, the suspect can be terminated. That means their light body can be trapped. Uh, that's what they call termination. Like, uh, cause there's really no such thing as what you call a death. Nobody ever dies. It's only they can trap your light body and it's like imprison your light, trap your light. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, trap your light body, right? So that's what they mean when they say murder uh, because there was a weapon designed at first it, it, for a while there wasn't a weapon to trap ascended beings. And then a new designed a weapon to trap ascended beings and gave it to the angel Murdoch. And, and he gave it to him so he could trap Tanishnim. 
So before uh, that weapon was, the new created that weapon to give down to uh, 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 Mel Dick uh, Murdoch so that he could use it to trap the light bodies, right? So it's, so it's a weapon like that that exists now after that time. But this weapon is not a really pro. It's, it's really prohibited. Not it's, it's really prohibited. It's really not supposed to be used on nobody, right? So uh, let's go to the next one. Okay. Article eleven, and we're gonna go back to some of the pictures to show to break down some of this stuff that Enlil broke. But Enlil gonna bring up the contract that he, that we agreed to this with our own free will. By way of Deuter, uh, a 28 Deuteronomy, I think it's 28 15, where he says that we're gonna make a covenant with you, I'm gonna be your God, and you're gonna serve me, and this and that, right? So, anybody got any questions? Hey, Ron, by to the second L's of uh, Nafiel in the building, man. Shoot, brother, what's up? No, no I have a yes, young L. Rahul back, baby. Rahul back. Rahul back. Rahul back. We back on it. Hey, we back on it now. We we got it. We got a little breathing room, man. So uh, all those strikes and things take it down. So we just got to. I just can't do too much uh, profanity, man, because they they fagging me. So if you want to speak, just uh, you know, uh, just the, the profanity. We can't just say too much, you know. You Absolutely. Rahul back. Okay. Rahul right. back, baby. Hey, Rahul back. I miss y'all, man. Oh yeah, we back on it, man. We back on it now. Like I got that yeah. last little part tucking off. So now, we, and then we can go straight live too. So it's like you know, it's more litter. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And we're gonna be having. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I just want to say, man. You know, I'm sure the brothers have been telling you, man. We 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 we're extremely proud of you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For the work you've been putting in, just you and Rod have been have been changing the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Man. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank y'all for listening. You know that. You know we appreciate you. Hey, thank y'all. Yeah, listening. we appreciate you, bro. No doubt. Hey, we're gonna be taking questions uh, from the uh, audience in a, just in a minute, man. Uh, what we at? Cause we had an hour, but we're gonna be going longer than that. But we just we're gonna take we're gonna have a time where we take questions. If you want to get ask the elders a question, you know that this and that, we're gonna get that going. Uh, uh, Article 11, the predation of a syndicate species by any other syndicate species is prohibited. Uh, that's like hunting. Okay, we're going to break it down right here. Predation is understood as the hunt and killing of another life form for food, resource, amusement without specific treaties with, uh, with specific treaties uh specify the agreements between both species now okay so it was a group of beings called the um we call them the yachts but you might know them as the predators they're these big ant looking beings they are uh, they made a movie about them and the predators right uh i just got to watching that movie the other day they actually come from a dramatist and they are hunters a lot and they were they used to come here a long time ago even when it, was a, it used to be a pyramid. They put it in the movie. It used to be a pyramid in Antarctica that's covered with ice. And they used to come there and land and hunt prehistoric animals. Bible talk about it. And this is against galactical law for sport. They used to do it for sport just to test out their equipment and to upgrade their equipment. Right? And, and they, they're not the only species that were doing this. It was several others, like the giants from Titan. They were doing, doing it too. So all these different species were going around to other planets and just killing for fun. And you know, you know, right now, the um and, and I, I don't gotta get to my Caucasian brothers like me, I'm not racist. I just gave I just gave money to a homeless guy the other day. Well, I I ain't want to tell you that, but the guy was a drunk and everything. He he probably bought beer with it, but I don't care if he bought beer with it. At least the, the energy that I got from it. You know what I'm saying? It was good for me. Like that's the energy I got from seeing his face when I told him Merry Christmas. You know what I'm saying? He go you 20, like the last 20 I got. I, I ain't need it because I I didn't need it right then because I got like uh you know, uh I got everything I need right now as far as food, gas. I'm just pretty much just uh I'm like I'm broke, but I'm just really just chilling, you know. So I ain't got I don't got I don't need nothing, you know what I'm saying? 
So uh, I had that 20 and I just gave it to him, man. I know he's going to buy some beer with it and some cigarettes or whatever he do. Probably buy him something to eat. And the, the guy live in a tent in the woods. Uh, but I gave it to him, man. Some just say give it to him, you know, so I just gave it to him. Uh, but I ain't tripping on that, you know. But it is beings that come here that's doing this shit for the amusement. They 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 hunt for the amusement. They play get mind games on humans for the amusement. Now we do got a treaty with certain uh plant right, certain plant races that we can eat that they yield 20% uh they they yielding their fruit for food so that that's what they say when they say the uh pacific treaties without pacific uh uh specified agreements between this both species so we got a specified agreement with the plant race uh to eat a 20 percent of what they produce but we don't have agreement and then we used to have agreements with animals with meat animals and they would actually they would actually come when you wanted to eat eat one of them, they would actually come and volunteer and lay down their life. Because once they did that, that uh, what they ain't telling you that those people, those plants or those animals, they got a, a, a soul lift. What a soul lift is, is they now come back as a human spirit. So it's a lot of it's a lot of animal people here that started out as animal spirits and insect spirits. And they evoluted over time to be a humanoid spirit, to gain the personality of the humanoid spirits. So they come, they, they might come here as a lion or a tiger. You might, your, your, one of your first lives here might was as a lion or a tiger or an eagle or a bear. And then as you uh, say, if you, in that first life, you might have laid down your life for as a food source or whatever the thing may be, or you just lived your life. And then you evoluted as time as a spirit to a humanoid spirit, right? So some animals did lay down their life and, and, and that, that was an agreement, right? A specified agreement between like a verbal agreement between the two parties that, hey, you're going to lay down your physical avatar so I can eat it so I can survive. Because it's just the avatar. The spirit of that being is in the inside. The spirit of that bear is in the inside, right? So syndicate souls, light bodies are not to be used as commodity. So selling souls, it's against galactic law to sell your soul. Article 12, it's against galactic law to sell your soul. You can't technically sell your soul. You can sell your avatar, right? That's what people really, when they talk about you sold your soul, you really sold your body to these beings. Your body got to do whatever they say do, participate in all these rituals. And then your soul is trapped in your body until the time is up. So your soul is a part of that uh, experience as well. But you can't technically sell your soul. It's against galactic law to sell souls for commodity. But there are beings who are doing it. There are beings who are uh, trafficking souls. They're taking souls, stealing souls, and trapping the souls and selling them to other planets, to other races that use this soul, use your soul for a power source where they trap you in a machine and use you like a battery. Your, your soul will never die. So if they was to trap you in a machine and then have some kind of machine where they can pull, draw energy from your body, light body or your soul body and then use that as a power source, that's what they mean when they're selling you, selling you for commodity, right? That's part of it. Right, Article Thirteen, and and uh, another another part uh, reason why we Sabians they broke galactic uh, they uh, reason why we Sabians is beefing with the Anunnaki's is because they broke galactical law by mining our land by mining our land after we uh, said that we didn't want to make no more agreements with them. That's why the project stopped because we we cut the contract with them and they got mad. Well, Article 13, territories disputed are expect territory disputes are expected to be resolved between civilizations. If the issue is brought to the Universal Council, their say is final, and any attempt to break these agreements will be seen as an act of aggression. Meaning you going meaning you 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 disagreement. Uh you meaning you break galactic law. 
So territory disputes, uh, this is a galactical law. And we. Uh, this is kind of what me and Rod Hayes is talking about when we're talking about as far as the land. This land, this territory is Inky, uh, is by right, it's Inky's descendants because Inky descendants are the Dragonians and they were here first before the Anarchies came to make the agreements with, uh, even though we would be classified as Anarchies too through Inky, uh, through Inky bloodline, right? The uh, people that's through Inky bloodline, they'll be Anarchies too from Anu, but the original inhabitants of the planet are the Dragonians. In I mean, Inky's side. So the territory, the land belongs really to, to the Dragonians. So, the, but, it's, but it's a dispute between Enlil's people who were who avatar humanoid beings to come down here to live, who then migrated from part from uh, west Af from East Africa to Transylvania. Then on to Switzerland, to France, then back to Al Madrid, Morocco, uh, West Africa. Then they migrated to the Caribbean. Then they migrated to New Orleans in New York and Salem and, and uh, L.A. And, and, and Hollywood and Las Vegas and Utah and became known as the Mormons. The original Mormons were dark. All these gods are coming. See, look, what we're dealing with, we're dealing, when you're dealing with religion, you're dealing with more than one god. If trying to, in trying to run game, you got Enlil's game, he running. That's one religion, like Judaism. Then you got another, uh, uh, like the Nomos, who the reptilians took that and flipped it. And, and, and they got a religion coming out. And then they tied all. All these niggas in bed together and tied all these religions in together, and they can't make you by force. It should be an automatic red flag if I'm coming telling you if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to hell. That should you should automatically know that's part of the that's the devil that said that. If you don't, if, if anybody come at using fear to make you do something, that's automatically against galactic law. That's automatic against galactic law. If I'm coming to say, if you don't do this, I'm going to shoot you or I'm going to hurt you or I'm going to do this. I'm going to force you to do something that you didn't come to do. That's against galactic law. If it's not by your own free will, it must be by your own free will. That's why they make you sign contracts and waivers every time they're doing something to you so they can cover their own ass galactically. Enlil made you sign a contract called the Torah. You know what I'm saying? The Torah, the covenant, right? He made you sign a contract called uh, Deuteronomy 28, where he says, if you do all these things, right, if you follow my rules, I'm going to be your God. But if you don't do this, I'm going to do all this to you. So by right, a lot of shit that's happening, especially to the Hebrews, is happening because they in contract with their God, who did not on his side. Your God is the same God that couldn't provide food for you and he had to send you to ancient Kemet to get food. So he broke the contract. Yeah, he broke the contract. So you need to be, we have, that, that's one part, uh, Paul, yeah? Another hey, part hey, y'all, hey, y'all. Hey, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, a good example of that is uh, the movie 300. You know, okay. on the Xerxes, you yep. know, he wanted, he wanted to put up those, uh, the Spartans under a contract. Mm -hmm. You know, Zan. That's and right. Stuff, and uh, he got mad, you know. Because <laughs> they went by. Uh, yeah, you went by. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah, but that's, that's right. Yeah, but go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Xerxes is, is just like that. He got that same, Enla got that same personality. I'm all, all God Almighty. Oh I'm a bad mama jamma. And so his whole, but Enla's whole game was. It was jealousy, man. That's his whole game. His whole game is stemming around jealousy. It's stemming around, okay, this dude made me look bad. Inky made me look bad. Also, he, he could potentially get me put in prison, a uh, uh, light body prison, because of the crimes that we committed. And then on top of that, uh, he jealous of uh, that, that the people on earth like Inky, more the Inky people there were the Dragonians who were the people of Earth, a key or Tiamat, they favored Inky more than they favored Enlil. So that's what created the 
oh man, nigga, y'all don't, y'all don't like what I got to bring. Y'all don't like the West Coast. Snoop Dogg say the East Coast don't like Snoop Dogg. That's how Italy was. Hey, the East, you you Earth humans don't like Italy. You know what I'm saying? So he he liked this, you know. And so his whole thing was all right. So what what, what type of why would you want to do a deal with a god who would who would betray his own right hand man just for amusement for amusement? Job was his right hand man. He said Job was his most faithful servant. And then he turned them over to get toyed around with and get all of his shit took and, and uh, took him advantage of, get his wife taken just for amusement, to prove a point. Why do God, if God know everything, if, why do he got to prove that this dude is faithful? Did he know that he was faithful? So that's another thing that people got misconstrued. These beings do not know everything. Not even a new knows everything. Now he knows a shit low. He knows a shit low. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he probably knew no more. He know way more than you can try and ask him. You know what I'm saying? Based on our, where we are now. But he, these beings do not know everything. That's why they ask in the Bible, who told you this? Why did you this? Why is he asking who, what, when, and why? Niggas said, no, everything don't ask that. And then you just say, my, my wife tried to make the argument, oh, well, he just wanted to see what they was going to say. Well, that would, that would violate his other rules. That God don't tempt no man. So if he knew what you was going to say, that means that if he if he asked you a question, he knew what you was going to say. So he was hoping probably that you are going to lie because he knew you was going to lie. And then he that's like tempting you. You know? So. Facts. But his, but his whole, his end little whole game was I got to get rid of the evidence. And we are the evidence that, that, that proves that he broke galactical law by interfering and speeding us up. How are we able to finger him right now is what they ask him. How are we able to say Enlil is the bad guy now? That, that's what they, so he wanted to get rid of us. And, and secretly, he had, he got this secret order that's working here that's doing the chemtrails, that's doing the GMO foods, that's doing the pauses and the deodorants and hair products and just constantly keeping us, uh, you know, keeping their foot on our neck, man, you know, with, with the, the products that we got to go to them. Now, a lot of us have went to herbs and doing things of that nature with our own products and, like, we, we recommend that more, you know? Um, but what I'm saying is we we calling for a cease and desist on the things that he's doing. We don't agree to his contract. We don't want no contract with no God. If we are God, what do we need with a God? If we are God, why do we have to serve some other God? Now, let's get into this. Because we are in territory here. This is territory disputes that we're really dealing with overall when it comes down to what Rod Hayes is talking about in the land, on the land, right? In Liz people were these Jews. These, these, Jew, these Jews. These avatars. And we traced them all the way back. They hide, and some of them hide in Switzerland. Some of them hide in France. That's like one of their one of their capitals. Uh, these beings, Enlil promised them a, a promised land. If you read up on it, they went to the land of Canaan, but it was already beings there, the Canaanites. If you read up uh, in a Genesis chapter nine, it tells you that these beings would be servants. These Canaanites would be servants to these endless people. And so that's the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, they are servants to these, the, the dark skinned endless uh, children who hide in the, who the real people, like the Simpsons, who hide in the background, like O.J. Simpson, right? It's the reason why O.J. Simpson was in the limelight and why they had to put their alchemy in the limelight there with O.J. Simpson. Uh, but these people, these dark-skinned Jewish people, these the people that you seeing that we were that we were frank that we were pouring the finger at the whole time, they were just servants. They are servants of their brother. A servant, a servant shall he be unto his brothers. So they are just servants. 
front man. Skull and bones. Hey, hey young girl, I got a question real quick. Let me just touch it off. Hey, uh, they had the Pope kissing those those brothers' feet. Was was that one of them? Yeah, they, they are one of the, the remnants of these dark skinned Etruscan uh Jewish people. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they are they started out in that land, that land that they in. That's that they say origin. The origin is from that point, from where they was, where the Pope was kissing them people legs at, feet at. And I, and I don't know, and the Pope got to be a, he, he got to be a freak, man, because one of them dudes, freaks, I know he, that dude, like he had just got through running barefooted 200 miles and then the, walked right in and the Pope kissed his foot. Straight corn and funk feet. I bet his feet smell like straight corn chips. The Pope went back right down. He probably sniffled his nose like, oh, man, I got to do this. But it was already too late because they got him on camera. He couldn't bag up like he smelt nothing. You know what I'm saying? He had to go with his move. We had to go on straight, follow on through with it. <laughs> I'm telling you, but these beings are really avatars. Now, somebody was asking me, what is their connection with the 200 fallen? These beings had uh, same, the same avatars. Now, every, it was more than 200. The 200 was only captains. It was a whole group of beings, more than 200. The 200 is only captains. The, these, these captains had militaries under them. Some of those beings were good, good beings, like Shabazz, or Shabazar, who broke off. And that became known as the tribe of Shabazz. And they were the M-U-U-R Moors who mixed in with all of around Africa. M. Hotet was a more. We already broke that down, right? But these beings, they look different. You can tell they real dark. They dark. They blacker than us. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. These beings, they darker than us. These these uh these dark moors, and some of them got the same last names as us because they 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 copied our last names. Like I know a I know a clan. That's Washington, but they ain't our, they ain't the same Washington as us, as us. They dark skinned Moors. They are Etruscans. And they in this Washington family, they dark skins, but they don't marry nothing but uh, but, uh white girls. They don't marry nothing but Caucasians. They hate Nubians. They don't like being around Nubians. They raise their whole life around Caucasians. And they Washingtons, but they dark skinned. Uh, dog skin, uh, trust me. And like I was telling other brothers that we didn't wear cowboy hats and all that over here until the 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 dog skin moors came. They had the the British. They had these cowboy hats and and, and boots. We wore moccasins and feathers over here. We wore our shoes with moccasins and we wore feathers. And we wore uh, leather and cowhide. They the ones that came over here with the boots and the cowboy hats, right? And then they, uh, as they mixed in with us, we incorporated that into our. And this you talking about going way back though, before even before uh, the Pocahontas story and before the uh, Plymouth Rock story. I'm talking about thousands of years that the, the uh, cowboy style go back thousands of years. When the Moors came over here, they were the first ones to come over here after the uh, the migration of the Bantu, uh, Armac Sand people, uh, the Bantu Sands man, uh, Watusi came uh, a little later. But they were some of the first people to come over here with those. But those Etruscans, they're the ones that had the cowboy hats and the cowboy boots and the cowboy belt. They was all coming from England with that shit. So cowboy boots and hat and all that shit come from England. Now from over here, we didn't wear boot cowboy boots. We wore moccasins. I'm telling you, man. Me and Raw Haynes gonna do a tape on that, man. We're gonna do a tape on uh looking at the cultural uh like the cultural clothing style, the building style, and the food style, and then making the connection with other cultures, saying that this culture could most likely be an evolution or a connect or mirror tribe to this particular culture. You know what I'm saying? So we look, we're looking at that as well. Uh, but not to get too far sidetracked, uh, Enlia is up for galactical crimes, man. He, he broke several articles. We, we, uh, 
okay? But we, we're disputing over the land. Get back to that story, we're disputing over the land. So now these people are going around robbing all the original people of the land, robbing their land and making them say, denounce their mothers and fathers and pretty much forget that you was even from this planet or from this land, a lot of y'all. Right? He, he forget you even from this land and wipe it out of your mind so they can steal your land. And they drink, they, they drink in uh they drink uh body fluids. But I gotta say it like that, right? Because you know, they vampires, put it like that. They vampires. I they turn across freaks, huh? What you say, Dream and Yeah, Dream and Chrome Freaks. Yeah, Dream and Chrome Freaks. These uh, uh, dark skin Drake going, and it's two groups. See, we got Enlil group, and I, I'm still trying to make a connection between Hayla's group or Tanush group, who were the ones with the Willow's Peak. I think that these beings mixed in with Enlil's family, and so they became one family. I think Tanush family. Mixed in that these uh dark skin vampire uh beings or these uh Vulcans mixed in with uh Enlil's family. I think that's when uh the cola out around by all this shit came about. I'm I'm gonna have more tapes and more research on it later. Uh we're building up on that story right now, and we're also building the story of Isis and Tammuz or Ishtar and Tammuz of how that went down, right? Article 14, the use of time travel to ensure a species claim on a territory is considerably fraud. Now, a one, it's, a, it's a group that broke this, that's galactic criminals, and they're being hunted down right now. Ashtar Command. Ashtar Command broke this uh, rule by going back and influencing Yaku to create the Frigolords and then by influencing Adolf Hitler going back and influence Adolf Hitler. Because these beings didn't really appear till the 2000s. And then they would travel back in time about a little bit before a little bit before 2000 when George reported them. And then they time travel back to it to uh to Yaku's time 6,000 years and influence him to create a superior race to the people on the planet. So they broke Galactic Law Article 14 by doing it to try to ensure their claim to the planet. Really, not, the, not their claim to the planet. Their Dragonian overlords claim to the planet, which is against Article 14 in Galactic Law, man. It's several different species that are responsible for this. Uh, but mainly, Ashtar Command is one of the main ones that is responsible for breaking it. So we don't got too much on inlay of time traveling, but we do know it as it is a group. There is a group called the uh, but they but they but but see see what they say it you you can time travel, but you see it's a, it's rules that you can't break. And article 15, I think I'm gonna go into more detail on it, but you can't go back to ensure your species. Uh, to claim a territory, a, a part of a land, right, or a planet, try to go back before this species with a certain time or evolution to understand what was going on to like, lay claim to their planet. That's against galactic law, right? So it, you can time travel, but it's different rules on it. Now, so like I say, the uh, the bill, the uh, billionaire's boys club, they time traveling. But I, but I'm pretty sure that they they stand probably uh, they know about this clause and they probably trying to stay from breaking it because those beings gonna be held accountable for breaking these laws too. There's no ignorance is no excuse. That's what a new said. Ignorance is no excuse to the law, man. Breaking galactic law is breaking galactic law, man. Article fifteen. The use of time travel to ensure species claim the territory is, is considered fraud. We just said there, right? Any attempt to change timeline of a species is forbidden. Even one's own is forbidden. So if a being was to go back in the time and try to change their timeline, like on uh, Back to the Future, when uh, what was that dude named that was after uh, Marty? Uh, 
I forget his name. The one that went back and got stole the almanac. Uh, Biff? Yeah, McBiff, right? <laughs> McBiff, as in Harold McBiff. Listen at that. Who who put the damn uh who put that movie out if it wasn't Freemason? 9 11 right. Twin Towers. Uh they, they show you all kind of codes in them. Uh but who put that out though if it wasn't Hiro McBiff, right? I got another one, uh, young elder. Hey, uh Superman. Yes, uh, wait, wait. Superman. He he told me it's forbidden, right? To uh -huh. interfere with human history. And he uh -huh. went back and he went back and saved Lois Lane. Uh -huh. He reversed time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's yeah. against the law. That's against the yeah. law. Yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah, but you so so when they when people when you got beans that's doing that, they breaking galactic law. If you going back to interfere, that's why that gray on that interview, and I'm gonna repost the interview uh once I get it edited. Uh that gray told him that he said, Why don't y'all go back and stop this or stop this guy? He said that we can't tell you who the guy is because we went to because they time travel and they these beings are under certain strict laws to where if they was to come back, if they was to they've been to time, they seen the guy, and they was to tell that dude who the guy was, they it could interfere with time, and then they would be breaking galactical law. So that's, that's why they didn't tell that dude who the dude was, but they did tell him that this that if y'all don't change, that the planet's gonna you're gonna end up destroying the planet with a nuclear war. That's what they, the uh, extraterrestrials told them. That's the only part that they can tell them. They couldn't tell them everything. That's why I said no man knows the future. And actually, they ain't, um, people know the future, but the people who really know can't really tell you because then they'll be breaking galactic law. If they really told you exactly what was going to happen. Most of the people that be telling you, they just be guessing. Because if you really knew, knew what you told, your ass just broke galactic law. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. Especially if you talk and told it to a species that's just in a in the process of their evolution to get to the point to where they're going. Because you just by telling them they, the future, you can affect their future. Because then they'll be making preparations to try to change it, which is really, uh, I think, oxymoron into as well, because why wouldn't you want it? If you know your future is going to be bad, why wouldn't you want to change it? You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of perspectives we got to take in and before we say, oh, no, this ain't right, or that ain't right, or this ain't good, or that ain't good. We got to take in a lot of different perspectives, man. All right, so it goes into, say, uh, junction points are to be avoided at all costs. Junction points uh, are, well, because everything is on a recorder. So the junction points, are, I'll say, like, you got, you know how you got, uh, like, video cameras on these stores and in department stores and things? Now, you got what they call blind spots on those cameras. Like, say, you make it walk into a certain part of the store or by a certain rack or something, and you can stand right there and the camera can't see you. It's called a junction spot or a blind spot. So, well, the uh, well, light only makes up 1% of the universe. So, and the light is uh, being bound by magnetism, which is, is recording for the Ash Ashley Records. Now, once you go outside of that freak, that light frequency, the, that you are, you in what you call a junction point. Now, it's beings that sit out there in a ship in a junction point, waiting on beings to come out there so they can jack them. Jackers sit in the junction point, and if you go out there and you get jacked, you can eventually you come back and file crimes, but it usually usually uh, is no they ain't gonna follow, follow pursuit on those crimes. Because it's already a law state, do not uh, go outside of the junction point. The junction point is where jackers hide it. They're jacky for your ship, and shit, they they pirates. They pirates, galactical pirates. So they're jacky for your ship. Some of them will make you kick you out and let your ass go out in space and take all your stuff. Some of them they cool. They might just take your stuff and then let you rot, let you make it, let you leave in your ship, tell you don't come back over to the junction point no more. Junction point, like, you know how you got that one spot in your city where everything that's bad is happening and they like, hey, don't come over here no more. We're going to let you make it this time, but you came to the, you made the wrong turn down the wrong street, playboy. You know what I'm saying? You came down the wrong, you ain't supposed to be over here. You know what I'm saying? You know where you at? That's, it's that type of thing with the junction point. So it says, avoid these junction points. And it also uh, supposed to include, I think it's in another article, 
uh the nebula and the nolan zones and the nebula uh the nebulas the nebulas are, are junction points as well although it's got a different time set in those uh nebulas because it's still it's light in those nebulas uh so it's a, it's a recording going on there but it's, it's a it's really a junction point so that's off limits all right, to incarnate uh, in an in individual form, to incarnate, to incarnation, I must have that on, to incarnate uh, any individual from different times. Okay, I, I, I know what I'm saying, Sarah, here. To reincarnate in an individual from different times should not meet, uh, in, two, okay, all right, go ahead. Two incarnates of individuals from different times should not meet unless there is a good reason. What this is saying is, say you was to travel back in time and meet yourself. You shouldn't meet yourself because it, it, it could cause a time warp. And that time warp could cause a ripple, a ripple effect, and it can change your whole, the whole paradigm if you come in contact with yourself. And it actually can probably delete you or cause you to be stuck in a glitch, or stuck in limbo, if you come in contact with yourself. Uh, so that's-, that's Not right. just you, but others around you. Yeah, even, yeah, that's right. Even if you was to come in contact with your mom in the past, these different, they actually show you that, they actually break some of this stuff down, some of these rules down and back to the future, if I'm not mistaken. Like some of the things that he couldn't see his mother, or uh, he did meet his mother, but she didn't, he couldn't, he had to wear a disguise or something, or he couldn't tell him that it was him or whatever. It was something like that of that nature, that way he couldn't tell him uh, that it was him or whatever. Uh, I think he ate, ate his grandmother's house too, but uh, that's that's really against galactic law to do that. You know what I'm saying? This would mainly be restricted to combat the threat in the instance of the universal threat, the law of time may be broken and forgiven. And the reason why they set this law because if they let one or two people do it, everybody will start doing it, and then it'll be just like, oh, well, you can't do nothing to me because he did it, and you can do it to him because he did it. You know what I'm saying? That type of thing. It's stuff like that going on. That's what the Dra the Dragonians are complaining about Enlil because they said that we let Enlil get away with what he did, and then what about uh, why y'all want to try to charge us and we let Enlil do what he did? So Enlil got to be brought up for indictment first. Okay, Article 16. Okay, no, I forgot. Hold up. This is the main. Okay, I read that right there. Okay, I read that. Okay, Article 16. No individual may change the Akashic records, memory of the stars, because the stars collect memory. Keep in mind, we told you light is magnetism. Magnetism is recording. We call it electromagnetic frequency. Magnetic. Light is magnet. Magnetism is used for recording. Your sun is, has a memory of all 93 billion years of what was going on here, it's recording. It's like the camera flash on your camera, on your recorder. So the sun is collecting memory. What do you think hydrogen is? Hydrogen helium is, right? So, uh, so, so it's beings that have technology where they can mess with the memory of your sun, but that's for, that's for prohibited, etc. cetera. Non-theatrical uh, research into dimensional Energy is for uh, forbidden. Attempt to break into the uh, great beyond or it's a forbidden. The great beyond is where a new layer is. A new created an extra layer so he can go up and, and, and dwell in the ninth dimension per gas. It's called the great beyond. It's only a couple people, a couple angelical beings who can access that ram. And they mostly are news kids and uh, close uh, associates of a new that can access this uh, uh, without, uh, they already got like a, a galactic pass on this. But anybody that goes up there without the permission, uh, it's, it's, it's real uh, laws that's, that's against it. The unlawful attempt to bring back someone who for sensible and understanding plus overstanding have passed to the fourth our fifth degree plane dimension prohibited is prohibited without permission from the high council. Meaning, once somebody dies, or what they call it, die, which is no such thing as death, they actually pass to the fourth dimension. And then, on they get the they pass the wind and the heart ceremony.
to the fifth dimension, right? And then continue on with their journey if they want to continue on to uh, all the way back into thought, to light, pure light bodies, to pure thought bodies, okay? Um, so to bring somebody, to pull somebody back from that dimension without they without permission is against galactical law. So when Jesus, according to the story of the Bible, we already know what the real story of it about the sun, right? And astronomy, we're going to get into that on the class that we're going to do uh, next week called The Origin of Christianity and Christmas and Easter. Uh, but just for sake of conversation, when Jesus brought Lazarus back, he broke galactical law. But I, but I think it is a three days, <coughs> I think it is a three day clause in the bringing somebody back from dead. So he might have didn't break law as long as he brought them back within that three days. I think it's some uh, in the clause about that. Because these people that die actually die in the hospital or pass in the hospital and the doctors bring them back to life. Uh, what is uh, what is being under uh, what they call uh, um, unconscious, not unconscious, it's called uh, a coma. When you're in a coma, where are you? Where are you? Are you inside of your body? Or are you up in a higher dimension waiting for your body to repair so you can come back? You know what I'm saying? Article 17. I think uh, I think Inlia broke this damn lie. I think he broke these lies. Hold on, let's get into it. Let's go. Let's see. Article 17, the destruction of stars. Any physical celestial body. Uh, that's like a light body, uh, celest uh, uh, planet that can include because we are planets as well. We are suns, we are planets. So when they say celestial body, that, that can include us, all actual physical uh, planets and stars. It's completely prohibited unless the star is artificial. So you know you have re uh, like real stars, then you have artificial stars. Your star is actually an artificial star. Your star is actually an artificial star. It actually was designed by us. Several stars, maybe about, uh, and artificial could be, uh, you know, it, it could be a loose term too, because what people, what you consider as real, real or, or fake, right? Real is only electromagnetic signals interpreted by the brain. So artificial, not necessary, don't mean that it ain't, ain't real, right? Artificial mean that it was, it was actually, it wasn't a natural occurrence. It was actually done by someone. So your sun can be took out because it's artificial. The moving of any natural sun. So now, so now we go on to natural suns. Natural suns are suns that the universe, when the Big Bang took place and different chemicals and gases mixing and caused an explosion and created those stars. Those are natural stars. Uh, like Betelgeuse, it's a natural star. That's getting ready to burn out. And uh, we they already contained it, so then it went supernova, and they was hoping to reignite it to a new sun. So they're working on that now. Stars cannot and shall not be moved unless given direct paths from the universal courts. Moving a planet to its proper position, orbit is excused. So there we have technology where we can move suns. We can tow planets. We already told you this. We were the first niggas that told it, told us. We can tow planets. Your moon was told there. Your moon is an old kinetic, has an old kinetic engine in it that has been since reactivated. Right? And so there's there the beings, the Anunnaki's have technology to move stars, to move planets. So uh, some of these stuff you can like uh, we had to alter Earth uh, and it's, it's, we had to pretty much rearrange your whole solar system uh, once the crash for Nubiru took place. So that was uh, or that was properly uh, commissioned to get everything back properly aligned. But to do that really is to break galactic law. And like I say, I believe, uh, and a lot of people don't like the word belief, but I, I think that it, it was uh, we had to crash intentionally. We crashed intentionally into these people, man. I think the Anarchies crashed intentionally into this shit. You know what I'm saying? Now I believe that I believe the Tiamat one was an accident, 
but I believe that the uh, the male deck and Neptune was intentional. You know what I'm saying? I mean, remember just, I told you. Remember I told you that. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting to think that now, Dre. It was intentionally, man. <laughs> it was intentionally, man. Like I believe that that new uh, we attacked Neptune because we had beat. Yeah, we had beat the niggas, right? At the time. Yeah. So it has. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, go ahead. I mean, like, nah, like, I, I was gonna say, it's like, quite coincident that we had beef with them at that time, and then all of a sudden we crashed specifically into the two planets that we got beef with. Come on, man. I think, I think, I think, in, I think from my memory, we chose the lesser of both evils. It was either Uranus or it was it was Meldek, and we chose Meldek. Yeah, that's what I think. I think, and the Meldek is where, where the Dragonians root was coming from. The disagreeables. Uh, so I, yeah, I think we did that on purpose, man. I'm trying to think that that wasn't no accident, man. You know what I'm saying? How are we so advanced and then we bump into a damn planet? And Nubiru was, was like being scanning like the a, galaxy. It was like, uh -huh. oops, excuse me. It was like, oops, excuse me. Yeah, my bad. make it like, yeah, make it like, you know, I bumped you on purpose, but we're going to make it like we did it by accident. And that's why we here, because we, we punished for that shit, bro. That's what I think, bro. That's exactly what you know I was saying. Because we, we can't leave until this shit's completely fixed. And why this shit, we trying to fix this shit. This other dude is over here trying to do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, hey, young elder. Uh -huh. hey, that hey, that movie, uh, Moonfall, y'all see that? Yeah, Moonfall. Yeah, they could have, yeah, Moonfall, you know, that, that show about the moon uh -huh. and how uh -huh. it was, and uh, what you was talking about, uh -huh. um, it's being controlled, but it was actually AI. Uh -huh. You know, they was uh -huh. fighting against AI in that movie. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, saying came back. But yeah, man, uh, I, I just want to mention that. Okay, yeah, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, anytime y'all want to add in, just cut right in, man, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I can keep going. Uh, okay. I know, but I want, I want, I want, okay, ahead, to, ahead, I, want I don't want to, keep, I don't want to go to our chat because I want you to keep going with this. No, with no, this, uh, uh, I, I really just want to read, uh, this right here is part one. We get through these first article. Uh, this right here, the last article that day I'm going to read the, uh, on the next one, I'm going to read 18 through 31, the articles on part one, uh, the second part of the hearing. But mm. I want to read some, I want to finish this one right here and then we can just go into like a talk and question and answer, whatever y'all want to say. Uh, it says only the government of that native dominant species of ruling civilization may sell a planet. So you can sell we, we, uh, as a whole, we can sell this planet, but we don't want to sell our planet. We got men. Uh, we and by right, the natives have first mining rights. Right. It's going to say that right here. I think. Uh, well, no, it's on Article 18. It's going to go into the mining rights. See, OK, all right. So keep in mind, all of this take place where it's, it's stemming around mining and getting minerals. With with a new coming here, with all the other species that come in here, they want some of them here for the water. Water is like a high commodity in the universe, whether you believe it or not. Almost right next to gold, water. Uh, melanin, it's it's a uh, us melanin beans. Like Rod Hayes told you, they selling the melanin by the pound in the Galactics. Melanin is being used for uh for ships. They use melanin as uh as like uh fiber for the like to put into their walls of their ship. They use this liquid mel melanin to put into their ships so their ships can travel faster and so they can go high uh so they can go faster and so they can withstand certain amounts of temp or temperature they can they can charge by flying through the sun. So they harvest their melanin here. Why you think they targeting Nubians to lock them up? In jail, and they out. They constantly uh, in there. When they, yeah, they they draining us. They 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 getting our melanin. It's, it's about melanin yeah. harvesting. Melanin is man. I'm telling you, it's worth more than gold. Melanin is worth more than gold. I don't it's, think I don't think like. the people really understand what you're saying right here. I don't think they really. I think they didn't really grasp this. You know, all the newbies on this planet. You know what I'm saying? You are the commodity. That's right. They just using different tactics and methods to harvest you. You the goal. That's right. Whether they use in prison, the prison complex, whether they use uh, the music industry, media, 
social media, anything to get you to 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 to, to destroy yourself. Right. When my man talk about selling your soul, we ain't talking. We talking about as above the law. We talking about metaphysical and physical, using letting them use you as a vessel to promote their demonic agenda, which is to harvest you, your melanin in you, you. From your skin to your bones to your hair, every every molecule of you is worth trillions to the you in, in the galactics right. and on this planet. And they know this. They are aware of this. They are fully aware. So y'all need to be aware. Yeah, so you know, melanin is like liquid sunlight. It's like uh it's really it can use, it can be used for a number of things. Uh, in the universe is really the most one of the most uh, dominant uh, should I say compounds or uh, solutions in the universe which is why it's one of the most highest commodity me and Rob breaking that down where we said that melanin is worth more than gold and they, and there's a certain beings that come here to purchase this melanin they don't have like ash star command what you think is they always going to try to get a tan and they getting injections and shit they they always trying to, to try to incorporate that melanin, but melanin is a natural gift from the universe. It's a it's a gift from the universe. If you don't, if the universe don't give you melanin, man, what does that say about how the universe feel about you, man? If they didn't give you no melanin, and if white folks got melanin, especially if they don't got uh, they got black hair or dark colored eyes, they don't got as much as we do, the Nubians. And it's a, it's a more they avatar they overdid it they blacker than black, you know what I'm saying? So man, our main thing is is to become aware of these beings, these off world beings who want to be our god. We got to free ourselves from this religion and this construct of being in contract with these gods, and realize that we are gods. This is our planet to be taken care of. As long as we go in the church and worry about some God taking care of the planet, the planet ain't going down ever since. Every time we, ever since we signed, stopped being God ourselves and turned our God power over to Enlil, the planet started going down. It started going down. We And we start going down with it because we are one with the planet. The planet go down, we go down. We steady, we living on it. So why we want to take a deal from Enlil and and wait on God to do everything. God is gonna save us. God gonna give us this. God gonna do that. And we still in the same dang predicament. We still complaining to God. When God says, when when, when we told y'all, nigga, you are God. Didn't we tell you you are God, nigga? So if you are God, what do you need with a God? But but fear. It's what's trapping us in this paradigm, in this religious paradigm, fear. Oh, you, your grandma, you don't you go to hell. See, but it is, we should automatically know as divine beings. I know us elders on the phone know we should automatically know as divine beings. If somebody coming to put fear on you and say, Oh, if you don't do this, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna hurt you, or you going to hell, or I'm gonna, you going you going, you ain't gonna burn for eternity, or you gonna. When somebody coming like that to scare you into it, it's automatically a red flag to me. It's automatic red flag. That's the part of the spell that they yeah. use to trauma bind yeah, you and compel you into doing something. Because why else should you believe them? It's just words, but they use low vibrational help to help compel you vibrationally to think it is real because emotions can affect us in many different ways, even to make us feel fear. And right. that is a uh, immobilizer and a motivation at the same time are you that's right that's good stuff uh part of you that's good good stuff so uh but, but uh, uh, most organizations most of these secret organizations that set up by these off-world beings uh they are uh, they ask you when you get ready to join them do you come on your own free will like in masonry they ask you do you come on your own free will all these secret societies they ask you do you come on your own free will when they want to uh, give you something that they know there's a break galactical law, they make you sign contracts with them. They make you sign your name, saying that you do it on your own free will. You understand that this is an experiment drug. Do you sign on your own free will? Do you acknowledge and sign? Do you turn, do you waive your galactical rights 
to try to give try to force injection on people is against galactic law. And for them to try to uh, say, oh, you got to, you're going to lose your job or you're going to do this or you better sign this. I ain't, we ain't taking nothing. We ain't taking nothing, man, because that's against galactic law, man, for you to try to do this. That's against galactic law, man, for you to force people without their own free will. But most of the people that did it, they signed. They, they came at their own free will. So now those, uh, we can't say much, but now those signs or symptoms it's starting to, uh, just like we said, before they took the tape down. It's going to take about a year or two, and it's going to start all the side effects to then begin to reveal itself. They hold the real agenda for the 2024 election agenda. Uh, we're going to have a tape on, on Patreon about that. We can't talk too much on that. Uh, but the whole thing is, it's a lot of illegal things that are being going on by off-world beings and that's why we having a hard time. And that's why we have can't get a leg up. We got beans that's more advanced than us. Uh, and really we can be we can be more advanced, but they holding us back and try to keep their foot on our neck so they can use us for our melanin. That's what I think the main thing is the melanin. The mel I think the whole heist, I think once they found out how powerful melanin was, they scrapped the gold, gold hustle and started going for the melanin hustle. I believe in Lily on the melanin hustle. And it's the biggest hustle ever. It's the biggest hustle ever. So that's why he's so adamant about it. It's the big, melanin is the biggest, it's like the biggest commodity in the universe right now going. And I think that's why Enlil was so adamant about running his game and running, keeping his program going. And so now we at the point where now we, had, uh, we, we, we don't want no more contracts. Uh, we, we don't want no contract with you, Enlil. Uh, the Deuteronomy, we want we out, we don't want that contract no more. We out of that. We were minors. We were minors when he when they forced us into this. Because once y'all, once y'all children, when your parents force you Jesus on you, when you a kid, when they force Islam on you, if you come up in Islam or whatever religion, when you a kid, when they force this stuff on us, told us that you don't go to hell as a kid. You don't go to hell if you don't get down with Jesus. Now, what that does to a kid. What does that do to a kid, man? If you don't get down to sign this contract with Enlil, you're going to hell. You got to get down with God, the God of the Bible. As a, ch a child, they came at us as a minor. We didn't know no better. So by that right, we could, well, now that we know better, we can do better. And we can say now, hey, we don't want to be, we ain't in agreements with this contract. When we made this contract, we were minors. Our parents didn't know no better. Now we know better. We don't want to be in contract with you no more. So all the things that, that all the agreements is none and void. We got to renegotiate this contract. And personally, I don't know about y'all, but personally me, I don't want to uh, uh, renegotiate with a crazy nigga like Enlil. A nigga that tried to get you to kill your own son, then say, never mind, like I'm just playing. That nigga crazy. A nigga that turned his own right hand man in to be tortured and tormented. Right? Job was his number one guy. He said Job was his number one guy. Need I point that out? And you saw what he did to him. So imagine if you ain't his number one guy, what he'd do to you? What would he do with the guy that ain't his number one guy? He did that to Job. He said you can do it. No right, go ahead. Go ahead, Joy. No, I'm sorry. I keep jumping in my back. Ahead, there, there is no there is no contract. That contract is null and void. That contract's been, been breached. That's right. That's right. Since day one. That's right. There's no contract. That's right. That's right. It was a fraud. It was a fraud from and the what is, and, and what is a contract? Conning you and tracking your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting you. He go con us. That's the first half. And he gonna keep track of us when he comes. <laughs> you sure already know from the gate you being kind. You know what I'm right. Saying? Just being kind. <laughs> right, right. It's automatic. It's automatic. So hey, so I, I get what you're saying, Dre. It's automatic, none and boy, because we were minors anyway when he signed. We we wasn't uh fifth dimension. We, well, we were fifth dimensional beings, but we under uh we under the third dimensional uh pr principles. And so what is one of the first laws of a contract? What's yeah. the first law of a contract? It must be of what? A, a meeting, meeting of the minds. Yeah, meeting of the minds. That's right. 
Were, were you present? Uh, was I present with the uh, Dur going to? Yeah, did you sign that contract? Were yeah, you there no, to, I, ain't you there to sign I ain't sign it. Correct. Therefore, there's no contract. Yeah, there's no contract. It's void. The contract is a fraud. It's a fraud. And minors can't sign a contract. You have to be a mature adult. That's what I'm saying. So that's that's automatic red flag that when he got get us as a kid talking about we Hebrews or Christians. Kids shouldn't be introduced to religion till like they old enough to understand the, the, the rules to the shit. You introduce a kid to religion, they have it's almost like you have no choice. As a kid, you coming up as a Christian, you have no choice. But with your mama and your grandma, everybody tell you, you will go to hell. They they all with it. It's like that's, it's like it's right. Called, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So indeed, that's called fear and duress. Yeah. You like you got no choice. Almost that means your parents sign contracts under fear and duress. That's right. That's right. Uh, go ahead, Dre. Go ahead. You want to build on it? That's, that's good. That's another violation of a contract. That's another that's right. breach of contract. That's right. That means that's another that's another thing that makes a contract null and void. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, it's, it, and keep in mind, Enlil is not the only god that came here with his religion because it's a lot of these extraterrestrial beings come here and start a religion like uh, Joseph Smith for the mm -hmm. Mormons. Uh, Several other beings come to start their own religion. They be most of them be extraterrestrial. A lot of them were Venerians. A lot of them were Venerians uh, to start all these new religions. Uh, the Seven Day Adventists, they all were Venerians. Uh, Mormons, uh, the Latter Day Saints, they all Venerians. Uh, Latter Day Saints, I think, was started by Joseph Smith's brother. They were extraterrestrials from Venus. They came with Val Thor now. Uh, so that's why Enlil made a reference in his contract that. Don't serve no other God. When you get down with me, I'm your pimp. You go out, don't be uh, reckless eyeballing another God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like some pimp yeah. shit, right? Really? Don't be, don't be reckless is, God, You trying to say God is insecure? Yeah, God is insecure. He <laughs> will. He's jealous. He's insecure. Now, who want to be with somebody like that? Would a woman want to be with a man that's jealous and insecure? All the time, nonstop, and he even threatened to he he turned his own uh, son in to die for some niggas that I you know what I'm turned his own son in to die, and just sit there and watch. Yeah, like yeah, my only forgot bull crap, man, bunch of crap. Only forgot poor guy. Yeah, right. So, Italy, you being indicted. For clock breaking several articles of the of the, the uh the Galactic Federation of the Galactic Laws, and you will. This is the hearing. We're gonna put an anchor monitor on this dude because he because he got hey we we, we really don't want to give him no bail, but a, a new gonna give him give him a bail, right? We don't want to give him no bail. We really want to arrest him now and lock him up, but we're gonna put an anchor monitor on him, and he's uh he got a curfew now. And if we see any other chemtrail after this, oh man, it's gonna get crazy. If we see chemtrails, we don't want to see no more. We want y'all to stop doing these GMOs. All is want this to see. This is a cease and desist on all of the the the, uh, the depopulation weapons that they're using against us. This is a cease and desist. We're no longer agreeing to this contract, and we're sending this frequency and message. Uh, to the high council, to where it can be reviewed. Enlil is being indicted. We want to bring him in for a grand jury for murder and several other galactical crimes. And we will be bringing up, we got witnesses, and we will be bringing other people that are part of the same indictment because we, we run the Rico on these niggas, man. We run the Rico. We run the Rico. Rack is uh, what they call it, racketeer. We run the Rico on, uh, on Enlil, man. <laughs> You had a Rico on this nigga, man. Criminal organization, huh? Hey, there's a lot of them, man, because you got all those uh, storefront churches. Yeah, there's a lot of them hustling yeah. out here, man. So I'm saying, you know, man. Big, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we we were we were in the uh, Rico on Enlil, and Enlil paid. He got people that work for Enlil flying planes and everything. They get planes. They pay Enlil pay good. He pay good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> to promote his word, his word, his contract to 
to all a preacher is is the businessman for Enlil or uh, salesman for Enlil. They go out and promote his contract and get you to sign it. <laughs> and then from that point on, you you pay money. It's, it's just like a, uh, it's just like insurance. Enlil uh, getting down with God is like insurance. It's like you gonna insurance that you gonna get into heaven, <laughs> right? So it's like insurance. You pay him every month ten percent. Just for him to say, "Oh yeah, I got you covered." <laughs> and then when you then when you wreck, they say, "Oh well, yeah, they, that was your fault. You wrecked. You did that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you, man, we can't pay for that. We can't pay. You wrecked it. Unless you got full coverage. You know what I'm saying? So, getting to yeah. sign up with God is just like signing for insurance, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's really, it's really, yeah. a, it's really a fraud. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? Damn. Man. Yo, that reminds me of this movie I seen years ago. I got this dude's name, but he's the same guy that does those, like, you know, Journey to the Center of the Earth, that uh -huh, guy. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the guy. First one, to do, first one to do the mummy movies. That guy, I've got his name. But anyway, he did this movie called, like, Deal with the Devil or something with his only lady. That's Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser. That's who it is. <laughs> he kept making it. He, you know, he had, like, three wishes with this devil and with the devil. And she, every time he got a wish, the wish would it would be the wish he wanted, but it would blow up in his face. So even when you make it, and, and I was I watched this as a young kid, but it stuck with me as some alchemy because I'm like, you know what? That's how a devil works. That's how it works when you make a deal with the devil. You making a deal with the devil. That was a liar, man. And there was a fucking liar. So no matter whether you make a deal, it's gonna blow. It's not. It's not the deal you think you're getting. It's all designed to get you to let him use you as a vessel to promote the, the, the his, his, his demonic agenda. Which is to give us to himself, give us to him as food. When I mean food, I mean using your body as fucking your melanin, your fucking eyes. Everything about you is is power, galactical power. That's right. That's You're the right. chosen one. That's right. And they know, and they and everything around you is a systematic design to keep you from being aware of who you are. But it's over. The jig is up. Yeah, the gig is up, man. We don't want no more dealings with this cat, man. We ready to take, we ready to be the caretakers of our own planet. And uh, we ready for those who want to get ready to go. So for those who volunteered to come here from the from their other galaxies and that's gonna choose to stay here and, and make this their home, we welcome those beings because those beings come in peace. But in Lil. He full of he try he coming to make play games with us because we it's like you had, got a little brother and you toy like like when I was like when I was younger and I, I I don't like I don't recommend doing this to your little brother but we my my little brother was little we used to take uh, he used to have diapers on we used to get ice cubes and put them down in his diaper and make him run around the house <laughs> make him yeah. run around the house yeah he's he's. Hey, he, he couldn't talk. My brother the figure go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You, know, you want to tell me? Yeah, that's to put my little brother in the figure four. Hey, Remember right. the figure four? Remember the Iron Sheik? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. You you, you experiment <laughs> on your little brother. You do all your tests, oh, your moves, you got on the machine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what you got to do to your little brothers. That's how you show them how much you love them. So I guess this Italy way is showing him how much he loves us, huh? About doing, doing, <laughs> doing what he's doing, cause man, like I say, it, it, it ain't, it ain't, uh, and it really ain't Italy's fault. I mean, it is Italy's fault, but it's really now we're at the point. It, it was to work us to this point. I think it was all part of pl the plan to let Italy be what he did. It was all to work us to this point where we at now, where we can say what what's going on and what's what, and say. Well, hey, man, you know, we ready to take on our own responsibilities as gods. You know what I'm saying? We got responsibility. God, God got responsibility. A lot of niggas don't like the word God, but we can use whatever word you like. But for sake of conversation, um, we ready to assume our responsibilities. We're not minors anymore. We can take care of ourselves. We don't need Enlil to take care of us. He hasn't been taking care of us anyway. All the promises... And he ain't making, and he wasn't even making a promise to us. He was talking to his people. We, we, we uh, most of us that's listening now is Inky's people, is Murdoch's children, or uh, Hanuel's children, or uh, some of y'all on the phone are on, on, on news sons and daughters that's on the line right now, right? Or uh, one of the elders' sons and daughters, like uh, some of the elders are news uh, uh, sons and daughters. 
And then some of the elders are of like Inkies or some of the older elder sons, like me. I'm an elder, but my my father is also an elder, and my uncle is also an elder. Uh, 19 elder. Murdoch would be my uncle. That's why they call him Tahuti. And that's why he his symbol is the Unk. Tahuti nickname is Unk. That's his nickname, Unk. Like uncle. And what they did is try to reverse the alchemy and gave us, instead of Uncle Tahuti, they gave us Uncle Sam. And Uncle Sam got us under, got us a dream to contracts too to pay him uh some of our money. And we don't even know who uh, we don't even know who the hell Uncle Sam is. Who the hell is Uncle Sam? You know what I'm saying? But but some dog skin or trust skins smiling in the background with a clown outfit on. You know what I'm saying? But this shit is crazy, man. Hey, yeah, hey, who is Inky's yeah. children? Yeah. Inky's children. Right. Go ahead, go ahead, uh -huh. go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. My bad, go ahead. Somebody's asking who's Inky's children. Inky's children is uh Tahuti, uh Murdoch, um, the ones that I know of for show, uh Damuzi, which could, could translate to host uh to uh Han Yuil. I think Han Yuil is either a son of Inky or a son of uh a new, I, I had him as a son of a new because that's what the experience was showing me at first. Uh, so Inky's children stems down from Murdoch. Damozi is one of his younger sons. He had uh, uh, matter of fact, I tell you what, I'm gonna do a, that's I'm gonna do it. I did a tape on Enlil's kids. I'm gonna do a tape on Inky's kids. I got a list of the bloodline where I give all the names. Uh, we'll name all the names. Okay, so we'll be going over there. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do a tape on that for you, the uh, children of Inky. Since we've been doing so much about Inlil, we're gonna do some stuff on in, uh, Inky. Inky. So Inky is my father as well. Uh, that's right, man. Inky's a uh, uh, Inky. A lot of Inky's children is here. Tahuti is from Lyra. Yeah, Lyra is another name for Eliun. El Lyra and Eliun is the same. Uh, Lyra. That's what it's referred to by certain beings, uh, uh, the, these uh, dark-skinned Moors, these Hindus, they refer to it as Lyra. We refer to it as Eliun. Inside of Eliun, we was from a galaxy, uh, a, a 19th galaxy in Eliun. Yeah, so the, 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 they talk about the human species evoluting from um, Lyra. That's talking about us. We were the humanoid species that evoluted. When the war broke out and uh, on risk, and then that war expanded for more than one planet, it was like a whole galactic war. We was fighting tooth and nail, man. Yeah, humans are from Lyra, the human avatars. Not originally, though. Originally, we migrated to Lyra, but we were one of some of the first species, the humanoid species. Was some of the Lyra's actually a new a new system that was created maybe less than. 40 billion years ago. So a lot of those stars are new. You'll see that they blue stars, new stars. Uh, after a new one, a competition by 45 billion years ago, then they, they created Lyra. And it was like pretty much like a dude was creating a whole nother system. He created a garden like the Vegas. He created uh, certain types of uh, high dimensional uh, animal spirits who later on manifested on this dimension as well. Do you belong to Inky or Enlil? I don't know, Jalen. Uh, you, you, that's up to you, man. Like I say, we all one though when you get down to it because Inky and Enlil are brothers. They got the same dad, a new as their father. So we can sit here and go Inky and Enlil back and forth all day, but when we go back to it, you're gonna a new is their father, both of them. So they both brothers. So whether if you Enlil or Inky. If you Inky side, Enlil, I mean, if you Inky side, Enlil is your uncle. If you Enlil side, Inky is your uncle. So, you know what I'm saying? So, we can sit here and go, but we just, but like I say, this has got to be said in order for at the end, because Anu said we're going to get back to her, ain't no number but one. So, in the end, we all going to shake hands in the end of this, but the truth got to be laid out and displayed, and, and, and it's got to be understood and overstood, the truth. 
And then once that can be displayed, then we can say, okay, all right, let's call it even then. Let's shake. That's what I think is going to, that's what I think is going to end up being in the end. Everybody's shaking hands and calling it even. That's what I think is going to be in the end, man. Because it's too many, it's, it's bad blood on both sides. It's bad, everybody was involved in some kind of way of doing some kind of bad stuff. I'm Sananda. I'm Sananda Foon. I'm the 23rd elder. I'm the, I'm, the, my body is being avatar by Sananda. But I, but I, but Sananda is my galactical name. I incarnated here in this time as Haru because that's the last part that we left off of. Uh, and that's the part that we got to come back in on. The last part that we left in off of was as ancient Kemites or as the Netars or the Natharu. So that's why we uh going into the Natharu doctrine more instead of the Sumerian doctrine. That's what the uh, we was talking about as Sabians. But uh, so I come back as Haru at this time. But Sananda is my galactical body, 20 to 23rd elder. I'm the 23rd elder. We got the first elder on with us. We got the 11th elder. We got the second elder. And we got the first elder on the phone right now, on the uh, call right now. So if you got any questions for them, if you want to ask them any questions, who is a risk of girl now? That's a good question. I know that I know that a risk of girl is a news daughter with the reptilians. Uh, now, who is she today? I just seen several chicks that could pass. And I said, damn, that chick looked just like a risk again. She got the same uh, dimple. Look, I, I, I like th in this life, a risk again is like my aunt, my great aunt. In this life, I got an aunt right now named Aunt Gail that looked just like a risk again. The same dimple, everything. I mean, the whole, I can show you a picture of her. She looked just like a risk again look. So uh, I don't really know uh, who a risky girl is in this life, but like I say, I got an aunt that looked just like her though. Let's see. Yeah, Sananda Phone. It's actually Sananda Phone Home. Phone Home. My question is, where can I find information on the Black Mona Lisa from the moon? Uh, that supposedly was... Uh, what I believe is that was an avatar that these beings were using to fly the ships. Remember, we told you about avatars. And so that body just was an avatar that got left behind that stayed preserved for billions of years on back of the moon inside an air type ship that was two to three miles in height and close to 50 some miles in length and then width or so. So, uh, I mean, with link and then with uh, height and link, you know what I'm saying? With width, I think it was uh, maybe about 30 to 300 feet. Link was about between 50 some miles, I think. Where's Rod? Oh, Rod, uh, Rod, I think I'm going to have Rod on either tomorrow or Monday. I think he booked up all week. Uh, but we're gonna have them on. We're gonna have Rod on. Don't worry, me and Rod are gonna drop one every week. So we might do one tomorrow, me and Rod. Uh, 44 in the chat. 44. Yeah, hey, everybody hit that like button for me. If you want to show me some love, everybody send me a dollar on cash. Yeah, put your brother in the game, man. We just dropped it in links. Also, as well, we still got those books going for $45 donation for all eight books. If you want to get those eight books by the young elder, send $45. To the PayPal or email address and leave your emails in the links. Also, we got other books uh, coming out, and also that Galactia Family of Life book. Uh, the first elder was responsible for putting that together. Uh, that uh, book. So uh, we still say thanks to that brother Cartier for putting that together. Um, but what about to get the books rolling, man? Like I said, uh, I was trying to like I was behind on a lot of the YouTube tapes, so we had to like we had to put like three four hundred tapes out probably in the last four months. And uh, so we had to get the YouTube build up. So we got the YouTube build up to where well, we could drop one or two tapes a day just to keep y'all busy. And then I can start back writing, uh, finishing the books up. I already got four books that I'm almost done with. The Doctor's Manual, Majesties of America, uh, of Century Manual Volume 2, and the, the Black Panther book. Uh, I'm almost done with that. Uh, well, I'm writing all the different stuff that was the, that's gonna be, that, that Black Panther book gonna shock people. Uh, about the stuff that they got up in there. 
uh, about us getting back to land and all that. So uh, about the, uh, you know, the militia and all that on the contracts. So keep in mind, everything is based on contracts here, man, when you're dealing with the system. You know what I'm saying? Um, so everybody ready to get up out of here, man. We want to thank the elders for coming in. We're probably going to do this again tomorrow or we're going to because we're going to start these classes back. Elders, we're going to start this class like where we uh, so I sent it to the links uh, so we could get in. And then if y'all want to y'all want to teach a class on some Pacific subject, just hit me up. Let me know. And I can put y'all on where you can just teach your Pacific class. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you said you set up your page and, you know, get start getting stuff to your uh, where you can get stuff rolling on your page and stuff. So. Um, we want to thank y'all for tuning in, man. You know, uh, peace and love. Uh, I might come back on again tonight. I ain't gonna make no promises because uh, it's a lot going on. I gotta finish doing some stuff. So if I do, it'll be back ten o'clock, and I'll be doing the uh, the mother the eleven the uh, four tribes of Mother Nature Part Eleven. So that's the next class that we gotta do. So I might come back and do that class. So we about to get ready to get up out of here, man. Like I say, YouTube, we didn't do no curses, so it should be an easy check for you. We out of here, man. Hey, peace, elders. Love y'all, man. Peace. Love you. Hi, it's great. Yeah, peace, y'all love, y'all. bro. Hey, thank y'all for coming in, man. Hey, have a good shadow hour. Tomorrow is Friday, so everybody should, it should be, a, uh, I think the energy is going to be good to, tomorrow. It's going to be like more of a smooth day. It's going to go easy. I think we got like a little, we got like a little storm and rain coming in, but that's good because it's gonna cleanse. It's a cleanser. The storms is cleansers. Uh, that's a good side of a storm. So uh, we will get, get some of that storm weather in there. I don't know. I, I think the East Coast is gonna get hit, man. Uh, hard, man. They got some coming. Oh, it might have been the West Coast. I was looking at that, looking at that thing. It says it's gonna be a bad cold front. They already getting hit up up north with heavy duty snow, man. You know what I'm saying? Up there with I yeah. think with a second at man. So. Yeah, man. It was, good. It, was good to, it was good to see here for you, brothers. 11, you already know, brother. You yes, know, sir. 12. Yes, 12. Brothers. Number one, yo. It was good to see. It's good yeah, to it's good hearing y'all, bro. bro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it's good energy. I love this energy. It's uh, yeah. it's me, our voice together. It sounds like a hum- <laughs> like a harmonized band. But even my brother, my band, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. Man, it's like, you know, we, we fall right back in line. But I just want to say, yo, young elder man, you know, 23, you doing, you doing your thing, man. You know, we was we were saying to assist you. You know what it, you know what it is. is I'm only a point for the way, brother. You know, you know, I am I am looking forward to um, getting settled in. You know what I'm saying? I was, you know, I, you know, I had some things going on. So um, you know, I'm just trying to get back into teaching that first grade, you know, first elder, you know. Yeah, so yeah, 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 you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Adrian, I know you do it. You do it every day, Dre, a lot of times without even knowing it. You be doing your job without even knowing it. Because a lot of people do come to you for advice uh, that you be around all day. And sometimes you don't even notice it. You be giving, doing it. So, like, is it the natural? crazy? You know, I, I, man, listen, I, I don't, I, I, I before we get, I, I, I'm, I'm going to just go left for a second because ahead, you know ahead. how I feel it here. So, this is for the family. You know, um, I know the time frame is like 2040. You know, if you know what I'm saying, you know, but uh, I, I've been told that it might be sped up for a specific reason because I seen in a dream that uh, there was a newscast about, you know, you know how these new genders, you know how these new children are. We already know how these new babies are coming out, right? You know what I'm saying? Full pioneer, wide open, the is wide open. And uh, I don't know if I should say this, man. But uh, I'm going to just say, yo, so there was a newscast about uh, all over the country, elementary children flying. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's like, we about to, it's about to be sped up. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say too much, but we about to be, these young, the ones we brought forth, bro, they, y'all powerful. Y'all don't know it yet. But when you see those Marvel movies, right? They talking about they talking about y'all. Is mm-hmm. so I'm gonna just leave it at that. That's right. That's right. And I'm I, just, note, I just wanted to say. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Parker. But I, I, I just seen that vividly, that, bro. I just I just wanted to say to the family, uh, the alchemy of that new. 
is the most high for real. That's right. All right. They were shoot. They were shoot. They were shoot. All right. All right. Thank you, shoot. Hey, yeah, you want to say anything a par year before we get out or par year sit there? Yeah, I'm here. I was just going to say the highest gratitude. The highest gratitude. That's my altitude. And, um, you know, I'm in full support of everything divine, everything that's moving us forward. I give thanks for your class this evening. I learned a lot. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is part one. We're going to be coming back for part two. We're going to go in a little bit more depth into the contract that Ann Lil made and why he's gonna he gonna and he's gonna be arguing his side of the story uh on the next tape. We did give a little bit of his side of the story, but on the next tape we're gonna be giving more of his side why he say that yeah uh, like Nino Brown is it's bigger than Ann Lil. It's bigger than Ann Lil. These people want to meet it. You know what I'm <laughs> it's bigger than Lil. He and Quit talking about it's bigger than him. Uh the real I ain't the, I'm just a worker. I'm just a worker. <laughs> yeah, we got him though. All right, y'all, man. Peace. Uh, yeah. oh, peace. Divine love to all. Yeah. Why do? <laughs>